Welcome back to Small Caps. Once again, my name is Kerry Stevenson. Hey guys, you're in for a treat today. We're not talking resources today. We're talking one of my favorite foods, oysters. We've got here Simba Matute, and he is the CFO of Angel Seafoods. The ASX code is AS1. These guys have just put out their quarterly. It's all about oysters. Who doesn't like oysters? Hey guys, you're in lockup. Get some oysters in. And by the looks of it, uh, Simba, you guys have been selling a lot of oysters to people in lockup at the moment. Yes, thank you for having me, Kerry. Uh, this is a very good time for people to be eating oysters. Uh, oysters <laughs> are really good for your immunity. Good point. Hadn't thought about that. Are they really? Are they good for your immunity? Yeah, oysters are a very good source of zinc, uh, which you don't get in uh, a lot of foods. So. Uh, it's a very good supplement for your immune, immunity if you can't get the AstraZeneca or Pfizer yet. There you go. So eat lots of oysters. Well, let's, um, for those that don't know who Angel Seafood is, just give us a very brief overview of the company, where you're situated and what you're doing. Yeah, um, we are Australia's uh, largest producer of uh, Pacific uh, oysters. Um, we are, our product is certified organic and sustainable, and we operate on the Air Peninsula, which is a very uh, good um, location to be in for oysters, very pristine and clean. So we've got a very, very good product. We are Australia's uh, largest producer of uh, the Pacific oysters. And certified organic. Are you the only ones that are certified organic in Australia for oysters is that correct yeah so we've been the only one uh, it's hard to know where everybody else is at because we are the only listed company and uh, some some people hold their cards close to their chest <laughs> uh, but we are certainly the largest uh, if there's anyone else out there are you the only uh, uh, oyster company listed on the ASX Yes, uh, until recently there's uh, now is 33 which is also listed so yeah. Okay. Uh, well, you're the CFO for Angel Seafoods. Talk to us about the recent quarterly and the numbers that are put out, because we've got a big investor audience out there, some of whom won't know who Angel Seafoods are. And the numbers are quite extraordinary because you're selling millions, and I mean millions of oysters per year, and you've just done record sales. So from an investor point of view, you can talk us through some of the, uh, the, the, the numbers for Angel Seafoods. Yes, um, we, our model has been to uh, scale up and uh, acquire different um, different farms and uh, have a corporate model to the oyster farm, which has been a, a very mum and dad sort of industry. Uh, and we're starting to see the economies of scale coming in as we're growing. Uh, our sales increased uh, 46% of, uh, compared to the same period last year. And our profits at EBITDA went up from half a million to 1.3 million. So we're starting to see uh, that the benefits of the economies of scale coming in uh, and the demand for the product remains really strong. So we'll continue with this room to continue growing. When you, uh, it's interesting when you say the economies of scale and how that, that I guess that um, comes back into growth of revenue um, and sales, et cetera. Prior to what you were doing, was the oyster industry very much, as you said just before, mom and pops and quite small in scale? Are you the ones that are bringing it together and as a result of that, um, the ability to have a really good, strong business? Yeah, so we've, we, we are consolidating uh, and bringing in uh, more efficient and modern practices. Uh, we run a multi-base strategy, which uh, means we the specialization in our base, we grow our oysters in cow and finish them in Coffin Bay. Uh, and that uh, interplay of the different bays uh, makes our product very unique and different from, from everything else. Why is it different? Sorry, I didn't quite get that. Why, why is it unique and different from everybody else? Uh, uh, the, the different bays will contribute different things uh, to the product. Uh, so the oysters are filter feeders. Uh, and what you get is dependent on what the oysters were feeding on. So our oysters are pretty different because they're growing up in, in cow, which is a very different environment, which is good for the growth and uh, shell of the oyster. And then they go to Coffin Bay where we focus on fattening them. Uh, fattening them up. I love it. Yeah, fattening them up. So, you know, uh, what you want is a nice fat oyster, which is very white and plump on the inside. Uh, right. That is what our customers love, and that's what we have. Coffin Bay is a very good 
uh, brand uh, and everybody love co Coffin Bay oysters around the world. Um, are you the only supplier of Coffin Bay oysters or are there other uh, farmers of or oyster farmers in that area or have you got the majority of the Coffin Bay area sewn up? Yeah, so there are other farmers in Coffin Bay, um, but we are certainly the biggest in Coffin Bay now. You just mentioned internationally. Now, everybody knows uh, probably oysters are on the increase in Australia because we're all locked up. But what percentage is to an Australian market? What percentage is to an, um, an international market? And has COVID had an impact on getting, I mean, it's fresh seafood, uh, getting that out to your international markets? Yeah, um, Australian oysters, particularly Coffin Bay, are loved all over the world. Uh, unfortunately, we are unable to export due to uh, f exorbitant freight rates and COVID, which has made the markets uh, e export markets inaccessible. However, at the scale at which we're operating, we're finding that all the product is being picked up domestically, uh, and the domestic prices are pretty strong. So we, whilst we see export as a long-term opportunity, we are pretty happy with the local demand and selling into the domestic market. So it's 100% domestic. And so once COVID is, you know, sorted and under, uh, there's going to be even more growth for the company, I assume, when you go international. Yes, we have exported before and I'm sure we'll be, we'll be exporting in the future. We recently received a grant funded by the South Australian government to continue exploring export markets. Uh, so once markets really open up and freight rates become reasonable again, it's something that will we'll continue with our export program. Now, you are also doing a few things which are a little bit different. And I want to bring this up because when I looked into this, I was like, what is a flip farm? Because one of the things that Angel Seafoods are doing, ladies and gentlemen, is they're using innovation to ensure that they get, you know, I guess it's the most bang for your buck. So what is a flip farm trial and what are you doing with flip farms? How does that work? Yeah, so flip farms are a new technology or a new method of uh, oyster farming uh, that uh, doesn't involve uh, our workers getting into the water and swimming to get the basket. So most of our farms have uh, been intertidal farms, which means it's a long line uh, that what that you hang baskets on, and okay. your the people working on the farm have to clip the baskets on and take them off. Uh, and depending on where the tide is, th those baskets can be inside or underwater, uh, inside the water, or they can be uh, above the water at any time. Um, a flip farm is different in that it's a floating line system, so your baskets are floating. They, they're never above the water. So when you flip them is when they go above the water. So that gives you more control as opposed to depending on the tide, on where the tide is, you've got control over when you want your oysters to be in the water or outside the water. The two benefits are uh, you, you are able to manipulate growth and speed up the growth of your oysters oh. uh, because you are managing when your oysters are in the water or outside the water. But Secondly, as well, your labor costs are much lower because it's easier to work on that uh, flip farm. Your workers do not have to go into the water to swim, to hang the baskets on or take them off. You actually have infrastructure that's built to be on the water 100%. Uh, so that brings in a lot of efficiencies. And the, early tri the trials we're doing are showing very good results as far as uh, you know, labor savings are concerned. When did you start Flip Farm Trials and when will it become part of the, the, the growth and I guess the way that you, that you farm the oysters? Yeah, so we started in the second quarter of this year. We, are, we now have five hectares uh, that we are now operating as Flip Farms. That is about 20% of uh, the water that we're using in, in Coffin Bay. Uh, and yeah, when would that become normal? I think once we finish the, the, the trials, we'll see what, what is the reasonable percentage. There will always be some part of our farms that will be intertidal, and it needs to be that way, depending on where the lease is located and how deep the water is. The flip farm is going to be very good for us to put into operation water that was previously inaccessible. Uh, the water could have been too deep or 
you know, there are many different reasons. So the flip farm is really good. It enhances the value of some of the assets we already had. And for shareholders, I guess, at the end of the day, it's giving more value to the bottom line because you're say it, it, it's more cost saving for the company. Correct. Yes. More, better, you know, there's more cost saving and also the productivity. We expect it to be much higher. And that's the trial that we're doing right now. So when is the trial finishing, Simba? Uh, it will take up to about 12 months for us to actually assess the performance of the flip farms. Um, but, you know, we've got the farms, they're operating, they're pretty much uh, a part of our operation at the moment and we'll continue learning. Well, the other innovation that you've done, and this is for all of you out there that love, they aren't even shareholders yet, but love oysters. What is the Halo Club and why did you set that up? So the Hello Club is our way of uh, interacting with uh, with our uh, the ultimate oyster lovers. Um, so it goes beyond just the online sales that I think is easy uh, to 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 go and buy online. Uh, the Hello Club we're talking about taking customers that actually love oysters and uh, coming on a journey with them and sharing many other value adds apart from you know it's not just the product it's the experience of the program product and helping people have that celebratory, celebratory experience at home and enjoy the, you know, the food. With this lockdown environment, it's good to have some people receive something that would cheer them up. Uh, I certainly look forward to re- receiving my box of uh, Halo Club oysters every month. No, oh, well, I better get some Halo Club oysters. How does it work? Is it a subscription basis? And if it is a subscription basis, is uh, do you have to sign up for 12 months? You know, for those people out there that are looking at this, just not from a shareholder point of view, but um, how does it work? Yeah, it is a subscription. Um, you can sign on and sign off whenever you want. Um, we don't, uh, you know, lock, lock people in. Uh, once you sign up, you, you get a gift when we do the shipment at the end of the month. You get a shipment at the end of the month. We ship on the last uh, Wednesday of the month and people will get them on the Friday. Um, so it is, uh, it is a very good, uh, you know, it's a, it's an offering that we are, we've come up with to start offering our product direct to consumers. And we didn't want to just offer oysters, but to offer a good experience, bring that fresh experience to your home, to, to your, to your, to your doorstep. So before the Halo Club, it was purely wholesale only? Was Angel Seafoods just going out to restaurants and wholesalers? Yes, correct. So we were uh, just a business to business previously uh, and going through to the retail and the restaurants through our wholesalers. So this is our first direct to consumer offering and we wanted it to be more than just online sales and uh, particularly for people in lockdowns, it's good to be getting a product that, you know, that comes with a lot of uh, add-ons and will bring happiness and joy to to people. Oysters will always bring happiness. Do you believe that part of that, uh, what you're doing with there, has that helped with your sales, your revenue over the past quarter? Yeah, so the Halo Club, it's still early days. Um, We've just only commenced that. We needed to make sure uh, the first stage was offered to our shareholders and uh, soon we'll be opening it up to everybody else. Um, We needed to just make sure that we, you know, uh, put it out to, to people who support Angel are shareholders and give them that opportunity to have bragging rights and enjoy the product. But in the process, uh, give us a lot of feedback as well in terms of how they're finding, how are the oysters turning up? So that we're coming to the end of that trial and we'll be uh, offering it up, opening it up for everyone. Uh, we ex- it is going to be a, a, a considerable um, the revenue stream for Angel down the line. And uh, yeah, we are excited about, uh, you know, the offering that the Halo Club brings to customers. Any challenges for Angel Seafood at the moment? Um, is it, I mean, obviously COVID, the international market, but of course the domestic market has increased and that's shown in, the, in your quarterly report most recently. Uh, have there been any other challenges for you apart from there's no international market, but that hasn't affected the business? Yeah, oh, look, I think um, we are a great company, so there's always something that you're working on. Uh, the COVID is, is probably the main, it just makes the environment uncertain. Uh, as we speak, we don't know whether 
you know, there'll be more lockdowns in Melbourne or not. And, you know, Queensland has just gone into lockdowns. We don't know how long Sydney is going to be uh, in lockdown for. What's been good is our business has shown extraordinary resilience through this COVID yeah. pandemic. Yeah. Uh, all the numbers, the growth that we've had, we're in a, we've got a very healthy stock position, a healthy financial position. So we're pretty excited. And uh, we, we think that... Uh, you know, there is still a lot of opportunity, particularly for people to join the Hello Club and enjoy Aces at home. Okay, well, as CFO, let's do some numbers, uh, if you don't mind, Simba. Uh, what's your current market cap? Uh, where's the growth going to come from? And what should investors expect in the coming months? Yeah, so our market cap is uh, around 22 um, to 25 million at the moment, depending on where the share price closes. Um, you know, most of that is backed by tangible assets. So, you know, that that is actually um, a very good, so our share price at the moment is a very good entry point if anyone is, in, is interested. Um, the, we're targeting to get up to 20 million, um, just the 50, so that will be about 100% increase from where we are now. Um, and looking at the 46% uh, increase that we have, recently delivered a huge difference in our EBITDA. Uh, we are highly expecting that when we get to 20 million oysters, uh, our profitability will be very different uh, because the economies of scale are kicking in. Uh, we are already well and truly on our way there. The stock is looking good. So I think it's a very good time for anyone to be uh, joining uh, our share register. And uh, you know we've got a very exciting story ahead. All right, well, we're going to finish it up with my questions. This is what I always say to people. Simba, three reasons why now is a great time to get investors interested in AS1, Angel Seafoods. Yeah, look, we are a team that has got a very good track record of, uh, you know, delivering growth. Our revenue continues to grow. Um, and we've got about 46% revenue increase in the last period. We are the only uh, the largest, the only uh, producer of organic and certified uh, Pacific oysters that you can actually buy a share in at the moment. And uh, yeah, you know, our profitability is, uh, is, is, is showing uh, very good signs. All the signs are showing in the right direction, are moving in the right direction. So it's a, certainly a good time to be buying an angel share price, share, an angel share at the moment. Just be an angel, just be an angel investor in angel seafoods. There we go. Well, yeah, it it's certainly like, a good time to be an investor in angel seafood. Well, it, it, certainly the numbers are going in the right way. The innovation is going in the right way. I love the, the Halo Club, the Flip Farm. So lots of innovation happening. And as I said before, who doesn't want to eat oysters when you're in lockdown or lock up or whatever you call it? So leading the way in certified organic and sustainable oysters for Australia and the rest of the world hasn't even caught on yet, Angel Seafoods. Simba Matati, thank you so much for joining me on Small Caps today. Thank you, Kerry.